All right, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us here today for our first annual Crestwood Creator Toy Competition. My name is Mrs. Malazzo. I am the district superintendent, and I'm very excited about today's uh, toy competition. So the Crestwood Creator class is a new special programming class for grades K through six. The dedicated focus and curriculum is based on STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. The, uh, the objectives for the students are to learn and enhance their critical thinking, working together through collaborative efforts, working together as a team, Google Suite integration through project-based projects, using skills to engineer that takes mathematics and science applications. As you will see today, the competition, the students excelled in all of the goals of this programming, and we are absolutely so proud of all of your hard work and your achievements. There is a specific rubric for today's a toy competition. The student's team project will be scored by the following measures. We have concept design, model, directions, creativity, and those are our um, scoring rubric that we have for today. Okay, so let's introduce um, our judging panels. They're, they are from I2M. So first we have Jason Wickheiser. He is the film production manager again at I2M. You wanna give us a wave? <laughs> we also have Shannon Rampala, who is the quality engineer from I2M. And we have Brendan Gerhardt, production scheduler at I2M as well. Let's give them uh, a big comment welcome. It is now my pleasure to introduce um, Mrs. Sapak. She's going to introduce the teams and representing both Fairview and Rice Elementary. She will also share the development of the student project. So let's welcome Mrs. Sapak. Thank you, Mrs. Malazzo. So this project is a culmination of three months of work. They, they've done work at Fairview and Rice and the work revolved around a question that we posed to the, the students, which was, given all of these recyclable materials, can you design a toy that a first grader would enjoy playing with? And so with using the engineering process, which are five steps, which is ask a question, where they had to look at these items and ask, what are we going to use? What aren't we going to use? How am I going to put this together? To imagining what these things could look like planning out an entire plan with measurements, and then creating and improving as they went along the way. A lot of these students had used tools for the first time, like cardboard cutters and um, state-of-the-art, very large and very hot, hot glue guns. And they learned that this process isn't a one-and-done process. It's a continual process. They had to go back and improve and create, improve and create, make a new plan when something didn't work out the right way. and after they had made their project and Mrs. Bloom and I looked at them, the first graders in both of our schools gave their evaluation with constructive criticism. That's what we're going to call it, constructive criticism. And so after that, the students took their projects back, made those adjustments, and what you're going to see today is that final adjustment. So right now I'd like for the first race elementary team to come up. This is the tic-tac-toe toss team. Bring it on up, girls. Now, all of their presentations are going to show the entire engineering process from beginning to end. So you're going to see where they started out from and all the way to the end with directions with a demonstration of how to use their toy. So that way, the judges can go and see how it works. Hi, 
my name is Zobia Ansai, and my partner, Aubrey Detweiler. Our project name is Tic Tac Toe Toss. So this is what our plan was to, like, make our project. We ins we discovered that instead of using the pipe cleaners for the formation of like the squares, we used um, pipe cleaners because they'd be harder to color and for structure. So this is where we started creating a project by cutting a shoe box. We, we started on the tic-tac-toe board and used popsicle sticks as the hook, Psst. hooks, prongs. prongs. We added a stopper for like the pieces so they didn't get in the way for our like the popsicle sticks we used to stack the pieces up. And then we started painting the back of the board. This is where we completed the painting and we started making the shapes and that's what our project looks like looked like at the end. Our improvements here was that we made, like, we extended the sticks because they were too short for the pieces to um, hatch, like, hook on. And then we also added supports for the back of the project because it wasn't level. And we, so that's what our project looks like before and after like fixed it before and after the first grade project. Um, this is the instructions we made on how to play it. Step one was to play rock, paper, scissors to see who goes first. Step two is pick the pieces. Step Three is to take steps away from the board, standing on the side where your shape was. Step four was tossing, well, playing tic-tac-toe, except you toss the shapes onto the board. And you try to make tic-tac-toes across, up and down, and, or diagonally. Step seven was to play five rounds and have fun. designed this, um, you guys, uh, as I see, you guys are using all recyclable items, and these are items you find in your house on a no daily basis, yeah. things like that. Awesome, awesome. I like it. it, looks very good, you guys did a great job. Thank you. Thank you very much. Great job. Our second group from Rice Elementary is Fantasyland the board game. Girls, just take the game right up to them so they can see it.
this is our project, Fantasy Land. This is our project, Fantasy Land, by Alexa Mahalos, Julius Malinsky, and Michaela Hockenberry. This, is, this was our plan when we first started at 2.14.24. This was our creating plan. On 2-23-24, we cut and hot glue the paper onto the cardboard. On 2-23-24, we also made the game board cover. On 2-28-24, we started making the first game pieces. <clears throat> and then on 2-28-24, it was kind of just a mess, and we started cutting and gluing together some game spots. On 3, 4, 24, coloring dots and coloring the cover. On 3, 7, 24, painting the board. On 3, 12, 20, 20, 24, we were working on the trivia questions. On 3, 15, 24, we were taping down the game spots. On 3, 20, 24, we um, started adding cupcake liners to the back of the board to make it more colorful. And then on 3 20 24, we finally finished the cover. Before and after, the front changed yellow bind to gold. It wouldn't open, so we ripped it out and added silver flexi tape. The back added glitter, took off the date, replaced it, glued down the book pages that were falling off. Before and after game board, added shiny silver flexi tape to the middle, added drawings, added more arrows on the game board and over the flexi tape, added glitter to the start, finish, and the dots, glued down book pages that were falling off. And then these are di our directions on how to play the game. It's a two-player game, and it's for ages five to eight. Um, first, you open the game book. Then select one piece um, for each person from the white box. Do rock, paper, scissors for who plays first. Whoever wins gets to pick up a trivia card from the white box, read the trivia card out loud, and pick your answer. Flip over the trivia card for the answer. If you're right, put your game piece where the game says start. If you're wrong, do not put your game piece where the game says start. Continue to answer trivia questions and move when questions are answered correctly. Whoever reaches the finish first wins and gets the prize in the white box. Was there any rhyme or reason in the way that you guys did the paper, or is it just all recycled paper? All, all recycled paper. That's awesome. You guys did very nice. I like this. And can we see the winner's prize? See the winner's prize? Okay. I want to skip work. So I see, like, uh, now when you have the cards here, you're asking a question. How are you guys holding them? Are you holding it like this? Okay. Just make sure that. how many witches? <laughs> you got it. <laughs> okay, I like this. I got a lot of questions in here. Awesome. You guys did a fantastic job here. It looks very good. Do you think you guys can make this repeatedly? I think so, too. Good job, guys. Fantastic work. I like you guys. Let's give the judges a couple minutes so they could score the first two. Is that be good? Okay, let's just give them.
This is our project, Roll a Comet, by Lucy Pulaski and Kiriko. This is our plan. This is our original plan. We ended up adjusting the measurements in our final project. Okay. This is to create a planning. Uh, Lucy was st sick for first week of constructions, but was able to call Kira after school. She could help her plan out of the project this way. This, allow, this allowed Lucy to participate and was inject from the project of planning. Mm -hmm. Do you want to say? Do you want to read it? We made a lot of pro pro progress and began attempting to project of the pot boxes and uh, having them lean forward in ordering for the balls to fall out. We added a blue box for support. Improvements. <clears throat> we faced a problem with the holes being too small to allow the ball to go through, so we adjusted the size to make them bigger. Then we made a new board with larger holes for a cleaner design. Original design. We thought that the original design would be our finished product, but after receiving feedback from the first grade testers, we made some design changes to improve the final project. Let's play. Roll a comment directions. To play, ages six and up. Play by yourself or with partners. Roller toss the first styrofoam ball into one of the five holes. You will have six turns because there are six balls. If more than one person is playing, the next person will go. After four turns per player, the game will end. Okay. Okay. Can you tell me a little bit about your design there? I see you got some stuff down there at the bottom. Yep. Okay. Did you, when I was looking at your design, it says that you used a lot of uh, shoe boxes and stuff underneath that. Is that the, still the design as well? Yeah. Okay. All right, let's give this a try. All right, thank you. Thank you. You can go first if you like. <laughs> Awesome. Nice. Now you said you can roll it up also? Can you show us that? Very nice. Very nice. One of my favorite games is Skeet Bowl. So. <laughs> Great job. It looks very nice. You guys have a very nice design there. Um, do you believe that it is re reproducible every time you guys make it? Okay. I think you may be right. We have a lot of people out there that likes to buy shoes. I don't see too many people walking without shoes. So, looks very good. Good job, guys. Our first group for Fairview that we have will be the WACA board. So this is the WACA board by Kenley Long, Juliana Carnante, Wyatt Lupcho, and Ben Savner. 
The Wacka Board is a sensory board with a fun very variety of toys for all ages. Materials, hot glue, cardboard, construction paper, pipe cleaners, Play-Doh containers, Danimo containers, beads, yarn, tape, clay, markers and paint, popsicle sticks, Velcro, and straws. How to play with the Wacka Board. The Wacka Board is a very simple toy to use. There are many varieties of toys on the Wacka Board. For example, some of the toys include get the beach balls in the seaweed cups, get the volleyball over the net onto the sand, and endure the super cute sea life. Follow us on the journey. The process. Right now we are sculpting animals from modeling clay. Sculpting animals. Why does sculpting a sea otter? We used clay for the animals so we could get more details. Paint day. So today we painted the seaweed cups and the board. Today we are painting. We are making our toy a beach theme. So we painted the background as a beach and we are making all the toys beach or underwater theme. Adding toys. Today we added our volleyball net and finished painting our seaweed. Soon we get to start adding detail and making sure everything is glued on strongly. Today we are painting the dock and why is painting the otter. We also added a sign of the name of the beach. Kenley started drawing the stepping stones to the dock. Today we added our finishing details and fixed some things up process. There were good and bad things during this whole process. It was very stressful, but we managed to fix all the things that went wrong. There was a lot of disagreeing, but we always managed to come up with a solution. Some things that went wrong were... We failed to make some of our original ideas. Our volleyball net broke, but we fixed it. We couldn't make a turtle out of clay, and we couldn't use some of our supplies. Some changes we made were instead of using a squishy clam, we made a squishy octopus. Finishing touches. We added more details to make it more interesting. How to use. Throw the Velcro ball over the net to the sand. Throw the beach balls into the seaweed. Squish the sea creatures. Move the sea beads across the ocean. Push and pull the coral, bounce the coral, adore the sea life, and have fun. Now, is this a one-person game or a two-person game? Or? Really, there's not really an amount. Okay, so as many people that want to play at one time? Yes. Okay. The objective is to... Okay, I see. Very good colors. I like that. Your objective here was to, for, the, for sensory, you know, to have fun. Very colorful, I can. Very good. Now, where are the beach balls that we throw into the seaweed? They are right here. Oh, they're in the seaweed. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Squish these. Oh, oh that is. <laughs> About. Instructions help. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. I like how you guys incorporated a lot of different sensory things. My son is autistic and loves doing all of these types of things. So that's very cool of you guys. When you guys originally made this, can I ask you how long did it take you guys to actually make it? Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> awesome. That's very good to hear. I think you guys did a very good job here. Is there anything that you would want to change from this point forward when actually looking at it? You think this is a 100% finished project? Are you guys happy with this? Okay, I did see in your presentation that you guys are talking about how you didn't get everything that you just wanted into it. I wanted to know if that was 100% what you guys envisioned. I would like to say a little bit of an argument that I, I seen you guys talking about. When manufacturing things, you'll always have that kind of stuff, but the creative will always come out on top. Very good job, guys. Well done. Well done. Our second group for Fairview Elementary will be Floppin' Fishies. This is The Flopping Fishies by Addison Whitechalk, Lexi Coltrane, and Haley Coltrane. The blue is cardboard, and the red is a bar to hold the fish. Each fish is worth 200 points, and the treasure chest is worth 1,000 points. At the end, whoever has the most points wins. The beach balls will knock down the fish. You only have a certain amount of balls, though, so be gentle and careful. Our progress. First, we painted the box, and then we made three different launcher prototypes. The first one was made out of a plastic bottle and some yarn. The second one was popsicle sticks and a plastic spoon. And the third one that we made was popsicle sticks and a bottle cap. This is a picture of our third launcher in action. This is the back of the box. This is the final product. These are the fish that we made. And this is a picture of the beach balls. This is the beginning versus the end. In the beginning, we didn't have much done. We had the painted box. We had the prototype for the beach balls and the launcher. At the end, we had the front of the box done. We had all our fish and the back painted and finished. Problems and solutions. We made multiple launchers, but they never worked. Finally, we decided to use no launcher at all. We were going to use sponge for the seaweed details, but then we realized that acrylic markers and paint worked much better. This is the materials that we used. For the beach ball blaster, we used popsicles, sticks, and spoons, and then we decided to use no launcher. For the base, we used cardboard and decorated it with paint and markers. For the fish and treasure chest, we used paper with an eraser on the back. For the beach balls, we used styrofoam and then changed it to ping pong balls. For the net, we used an egg carton, and for the support beams, we used popsicle sticks and paper. Meet the creators. Addison is 12 years old and loves to act some plays and dance. Lexi is 12 years old and loves to do arts and crafts and cheer. Haley is 12 years old, loves to build things, and does karate. Thank you for your time, and hopefully you'll like our toy, the Flopping Fishies. Okay. Oh, I win. <laughs> <laughs> That's 
That's okay. Okay. Oh, you're okay. You, uh, I think I know what I'm doing here. I watched you guys set it up. Oh, I'm not doing very good. First. Sure. Good job. Uh, yeah. All right. Okay, go ahead. You only got one to get. <laughs> oh, we got it. We got it. All right. Okay. So I see in your presentation you guys were talking about having a launcher. Okay. Yeah. What was the main main issues that you had with it? It didn't want to work. Didn't work out for you guys. Okay, good, good, good. Um, I tell you what, all the colors are good. Um, you guys made all the fish yourself? Yeah. Awesome, good work. You guys have any questions? Okay. Now, what are these, uh, the bars made out of? The bars? Um, yes. Looks very good. And what's your target group for this age group? Um, it's really for anyone. Anyone? I'd play. <laughs> I like it. I probably <laughs> would. <laughs> it looks very good. Is there anything that you guys would like to change for your final, like if you would release this out on the market, is there anything that you guys would like to change? Any, anything else, guys? I agree. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. I see exactly what you guys are saying, and I do actually agree with that. I think you just need a little, little bit wider, and everything else like that. I think the, the colors, the design, I think everything that you did here did look very good. You guys did a great job. Thank you, guys. Our final group from Fairview is Flingasha. This is Fling a Shot. The inventors are Samuel Janoshek, Ben Harmon, Nico Malazzo, and Jerry Aguilar. This is for the 6th grade Fairview Elementary Crestwood Creators toy composition. What is Fling a Shot? Fling a Shot is a basketball-like arcade game. The game is played with a couple of friends. The catapult flings or throws a basketball, ping pong ball, and one of the several hoops or buckets. Some, some hoops are closer and some are farther. The farther away the hoop, the more points you get. However, has the most points after three rounds is the winner. Example, we made the project with cardboard, paper, paint, LED lights, ball cap, sticks, hot glue. What does Flingshot game is fun and addictive game that everyone will love to get the balls after you turn is up. Pull the orange cap up.
from the first day to the third game, we the day we put together the structure. Now on the fourth day, we painted the project. Next, when it dried, we drew and painted the basketballs on the sides. The last few days, we finished painting the game, and then we put LED lights on it. How we made fling a shot. How we made fling a shot was Sam and Jerry work were working on the base or the structure, while Ben and Nico made the slides. The project was a lot of hard work, but we finished the product uh, was something we were proud of. Problems and solutions. While we were painting our project, we had a problem. The problem was that the paint curved the cardboard at the top, we couldn't fix it. So we had to improve improvised by making a new addition to the tour and made it harder to make it in the five-point basket. Also, the LED lights broke. We fixed it by getting new batteries. Rules and directions. To find who goes first, the, um, every person playing will shoot one ball to score and see who goes first, second, um, the initial shot goes from youngest to oldest. There are three turns per person. The first person shoots their shots and, re and records their score. Make sure to either add or multiply with the special red balls. The next person, when the previous player has finished shooting and recording their score, the person with the most points at the end of the turn wins. Batteries not included. Credits, created by Samuel Janoshik, Ben Harmon, Nico Malazzo, and Jerry Agar. Thank you, thank you Fairview, Fairview Elementary School and community. Just this one. Okay. Oh, this is how you get the ball. That's not the Okay. Okay, three rounds. Okay. Ah. Boy, S. Riley has some good points there. Let's see if I can get it. All right, let's see. Shall I put it in here? And then I pull back. And, uh, <laughs> Shot there. And the red ones are special? It says plus one or times oh, two. Oh, times two. And you can also aim it, so if you were to turn this, you can oh. turn that. Who gets to have a red ball? Each person each person. gets to use every single ball. Oh. oh. It's only a times one, though. Oh, plus one. Whoa. That's not fair. <laughs> well, we got a clear winner Works here. Looks good, guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I Go ahead. You want the balls back, you pull it back up in the orchestra. Oh, very good, very cool. All right. I, see it, I seen in your... Uh, your report there that you had an issue with the paint and it curling was that up in this area up top here? Okay, and the the tape was the uh, was the solution to that. Yeah. Okay, I'll tell you what. I think you guys got a good design here. Is there anything that you would change to make it any better or? Uh, not really. Like right in this area here, make it a little better. Okay, I get what you're saying there. Okay. Just remember as you're building things, criticism of your of your product is, is something that you guys want to do as well. Um, I think the design that you guys have here is very good, very nice. I clearly have one sports person here, um, <laughs> not me. Um, 
would you guys play with this on a daily basis? Yeah. So out of all four of you, which one is the best? <laughs> oh, all of you have one, right? <laughs> all right, I think you guys did a good job. Um, do you think you guys could uh, mass produce this? Okay. I see that. I think it's all, all recycled. I mean, you could even, I'm sure you can get these in a recycled place as well. All right, you guys did a very good job here. Thank you very much. Good job. So I'm going to ask all the students, if you want to leave your toy there, I'm going to ask all the students to bring up your toy up to the front, line them up, because the judging panel, actually have it face the, the judging panel. Turn it. Um, they have a lot to score. They need some time, and I just think having an opportunity to look at them one more time may help them in their judging process. Yep. If you want to put even some closer to the judges, whatever is easiest for you. Wonderful. So we're going to give the judges some time. Again, the, the rubric um, from them as they're judging uh, the toys here today. Um, one area is concept design, model, directions, and creativity. So that is the rubric as they're going through it. Um, once they are done uh, judging, they're going to give it to our principals. They're going to add it up, and then we'll go through our placements. So if you just want to wait a couple minutes, and uh, we'll be... Right back with you.
Okay, the results are in. Are we ready? Oh, okay, that wasn't exciting. Are we ready? Yes. Okay, awesome. So before we get into awards, I know the judging panel wanted to uh, say a few words, so if you go ahead. Well, I would like to say this. All of the designs were awesome. You guys did a great job. Uh, being creative is not always the easiest thing, but to see the creativity that you guys brought to the table today is, is honestly astonishing. You guys did a great job. Um, and the teamwork that I see that all of you guys put in together, that's something to be very proud of. Because teamwork doesn't always come easy. And you guys did a fantastic job with the presentations and everything like that. Problem solving. I seen every single one of you guys showed us a little bit of a problem you guys had and how you solved it. That is going to be something you're going to use forever. Great job with that. Um, making an end product you liked. Every person I asked, do you like your product at the end of it? You said yes. I'm very proud of you guys. Stand by what you guys did, what you guys made. That is a character of who you are and what you can do. And I just want to say this. You guys all used recycled materials. I know that was probably part of the project. But remember, recycling is our future. You got to make sure that we don't just keep discarding everything that we can. So great job to every last one of you guys. You all got an A-plus in my book. Great job, guys. And I have a few words. I know I'm delaying the process, but um, I am absolutely very proud of all of you. Um, I'm proud of our Crestwood Creator teachers. Uh, Mrs. Bloom, Mrs. Sapak, without your support and fostering um, our students, you know, we couldn't have done it without you. So thank you to our teachers, right? Um, so we did YouTube Live for this. Uh, your teachers actually asked for that. So um, I want to thank them for that great idea. So because you are about to make history, so in the years uh, coming, um, I'm sure that this will be played maybe even uh, at your schools this year. But, um, you know, you're setting the groundwork for our future in this class, in this competition. So you were the first ever to compete in this toy competition. And, again, we're just absolutely so proud of you. Um, you know, we couldn't have done this without your principal support. So Mr. Say or Mr. Mangini, right? Let's thank them. They were a part of this process as well. Um, we also have to thank our IT department, Mr. Blanchard and Mr. Stucker over there. Couldn't have done it without them as well. And our Board of Education. They believed in this program, um, and without their support, it wouldn't be here today. So we have to thank them as well. All right, I am done delaying. Are we ready? Okay. All right. So um, when I call your team name, I'm going to have you come up. Again, we are doing third, second, and first, okay, for the students. Um, we'll have you come up. Your principal will put the medal around you. You got to stay there for a minute for a nice picture, okay, and then you can go back to your seats. And then after we're done with the student awards, we're going to um, give out some uh, teacher award, and we actually have a principal award, too. We just didn't tell them till right now. Oh. <laughs> All right, so are we ready? Okay, so third place goes to Rice Elementary, Roll a comment. Good. All right. Great job. Congratulations. All right, second place from Fairview Elementary, Flopping Fishes. Congratulations. Are you ready? Drum roll, please. No, it's not loud enough. Ready, go. All right, first place goes to Fairview Elementary, fling a shot.
Congratulations. So next up is our Comet Creator Cup. This cup will be placed at the top school in the teacher's classroom. Maybe she wants to take it home. She can. Um, but congratulations to Mrs. Bloom. So now this cup will be, uh, so when we meet here next year, you know, this cup will then go from school to school back and forth. So congratulations. And with that, our top principal, Mr. Sayer, you get to wear this medal all day today. Right, class? <laughs> right? Absolutely. <laughs> there you go. Yep. So congratulations, everyone. Um, again, we have certificates for everybody here for participating. But I do want to share with everyone, before the students got to this place where they are today, they had over 40 projects that they went against just to get here in each of our elementary schools. So great job just even getting to this point. We're absolutely just, again, so proud of your hard work. And um, your future really is bright. And I can't wait to see you up here at the secondary campus and see what you're going to do up here. So congratulations. That is the conclusion of our competition. <laughs>